Okay, so I will just try to focus on the thoracotomy non-rib spreading uh, procedure. And um, if we can have the next one. Yeah, uh, one could just um, go to the problem and ask following question. The zero hypothesis would be that the mi uh, mini mitral procedure is indicated and perhaps possible in every patient. And the alternative would be that the mini mitral should be performed only in selected patient. And this will be the question, uh, what is the definition of a selected patient? So when one look around the, um, through the literature, there are a lot of paper uh, discussing what could be uh, absolute or relative contraindication to mini mitral. And I will try to address some of these uh, things that I will show you also a very interesting survey, which was done a few years ago by uh, Tian and published in the Asian uh, Journal, uh, looking at the opinion of key leaders in mitral valve reconstruction. So some consider patient-related factor, age and obesity, but we have seen the, that, the, of course, the contrary opinion might be uh, as uh, possible as this one. Very complex disease of the mitral valve, uh, mainly also huge calcification where you have to reconstruct the uh, atrioventricular continuity, for instance, malformation of the chest. Some publications speak about uh, contraindication when the Euroscore 2 is higher than 5 to 10, then some um, consider aortic valve regurgitation, not a mild one, but uh, more than two plus to be a, a problem in this patient as calcified ascending aorta might also uh, be difficult to claim the aorta in this situation. Some are recommending, of course, uh, performing the operation uh, in fibrillation. Peripheral vascular disease, we have seen there are alternative routes to um, cannulate uh, the arterial system and prior cardiac surgery uh, cannot always be considered to be uh, an absolute contraindication. In some cases, with previous aortic valve replacement, the region of the aortomitral continuity might be stiff and be a little bit difficult. So when we look to the guideline, in the European guideline, there is no word left about uh, anything about mini-mitral procedure. Whereas in the uh, AHA, ACC, there are very few considerations. Uh, one of them is that the result of minimally invasive approach performed by mini thoracotomy may be similar or may produce similar result when it is performed by highly experienced teams, so that the only few words uh, that are left in the, uh, in the guideline. Um, so one reason to, uh, to push mini mitral could be just to be com competitive with uh, cardiologists where the opinion sometimes differ a little bit from our own opinion to convince asymptomatic patient to undergo <laughs> surgery. At the moment, of course, the, the mitral valve repair in asymptomatic patient with gut function, no uh, ventricular dilation is uh, class 2A and uh, evidence B at the moment, but uh, probably if we can really afford a very high rate of mini mitral with re repairing the mitral valve, this might be as soon as randomized study are uh, available, uh, could, could switch to uh, the class one um, recommendation. Uh, of course, this is only possible when uh, the long-term results are uh, excellent. And what is the definition of uh, excellent? Sorry, I can, cannot go forwards. The definition is uh, to have a 95% freedom from reoperation and more than 80% freedom for recurrent MI uh, at 15 to 20 years after operation. So we don't have to sacrifice good results uh, obtained by stenotomy just because we want to introduce mini mitral, of course. Other reason to, uh, to proceed with a mini mitral is to be competitive. Uh, of course, if you are living just close to a center which is offering a lot of mini mitral, uh, the cardiologist will, of course, direct the patient differently if one group remains very conservative. We have good evidence that uh, mini mitral reduces cost by different factors, less infection, less blood transfusion, less bleeding, and also accelerate recovery with a short intubation time and shorter stay of hospitalization. And for, 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 of course, mini mitral belongs to uh, becoming a modern cardiac surgeon since the imaging um, possibilities in the operating room have massively uh, improved uh, during the last years. Uh, so uh, you see here a review uh, done by Sunderman uh, in, in Zurich, uh, and this is just uh, the proof that uh, everything um, 
accepted the intraoperative procedural uh, processes like uh, CPB time and cross clump time, everything speaks in favor of uh, mini-mitral. Uh, when we look at need for transfusion, um, intensive uh, care stay, respiratory dependence, and um, overall hospital stay, so there is a good opportunity to uh, really move to mini-mitral. And uh, this is just to give you our, our experience. We are a moderate size center with around uh, 1,200 um, perm cases plus uh, 400 in a private clinic uh, not far away. And you will see we have quite a lot of mitral patients with combined uh, problems. So our uh, incidence of isolated mitral valve operation is around 50%. So with these 50%, in a teaching hospital, we have to uh, move and to introduce the, the minimal um, techniques. And this is just the next slide will show you the, the experience just last year. This was uh, with the integration of the first uh, private clinic, which was really difficult because we had uh, to take over uh, an institution with complete different philosophy, uh, old-fashioned uh, surgery. But you see we are about 50% of isolated mitral valve in the total number of mitral valve procedure. The overall uh, rate of repair is around 80%. It could be better, but uh, I will show you in other country, it is um, yeah, between 60 and, and 80, 85%. And in very experienced center, the last paper by uh, Adams, 99%. That's, of course, exceptional. So we have extremely selected our patient, and that's the reason why on these 78 cases, it's not uh, a lot, uh, we had no conversion rate. This is the German uh, registry for the year 2014, just showing you the proportion of mitral repair uh, versus mitral replacement. So two-thirds are repaired and about one-third. This is an overall view of over 60 uh, institutions, most probably with a large uh, range between the top centers and the uh, average or uh, low-volume centers. And uh, the overall proportion of, um, of repair for last year was uh, 47%. If I can show the next slide. You see here over uh, 6,000 patients operated on mitral valve in Germany, about 47% uh, were uh, mini-mitral cases with a mortality of 1.5%. So a very high adoption uh, looking at uh, controls in uh, over countries, uh, in, uh, in other countries in Europe, it's a high rate. Uh, over a full country with more than 60 institutions. So uh, just let's finish by um, the, uh, the survey, which is very interesting begin, because um, uh, it will give us um, a small idea how to uh, deal with different problems. This is just not, uh, how we try to predict mitral valve replacement in our own institution based on about uh, 1,000 cases of the last uh, five years. So if we have absence of dilation or a lot of cal uh, calcification and leaflet, the probability of repair will be quite low, and this would be in our own institution a reason not to proceed, for instance, with uh, mitral, uh, mini-mitral in order to increase the probability of uh, repair over replacement. And you see for one specific institution like ours, these factors with, uh, which are uh, documented by scoring point systems are very predictive for the um, mitral valve repair versus uh, replacement strategy. And uh, finally, this is this uh, cross-sectional survey, which is uh, very interesting. You see the, the expert, of course, um, uh, there were some um, criteria to uh, be asked in this. You had to have uh, quite an extensive experience, and you see the major centers with uh, a large experience in uh, mitral valve surgery were represented here by uh, one or two investigators. And what is very interesting, there was one point uh, which was recognized by uh, everybody. It's uh, that uh, at least 20 cases of training is necessary just to speak about mitral, mini mitral program, and you should not do one, uh, less than one case a week, which is very, very few, of course. But this was uh, very interesting. All the institutions were in favor of a standardized mentoring program and establishing of multi-institutional database. And now to the, uh, to the um, very interesting question. 
Concerning the age, you remember the first slide with the potential contraindication, age and obesity. When we look at the age, 70% of the experts found that uh, age is no restriction, uh, even quite higher age, and only 10 to 15% exclude patients over 80 for a mitral uh, mini-mitral procedure. The next question uh, was the uh, Euro score. Is the risk, preparative risk factor a, a condition to um, exclude the patient? You see 60% did not find that the Euro score uh, should be considered as contraindication, whereas 10 to 15% consider it at exclusion criteria uh, when it was higher than 10 to 15%. Then the next question was the problem of aortic regurgitation. Here only a large proportion, 60%, consider AR uh, more than 2 plus to be a contraindication, but uh, still 40% uh, would proceed with mitral, mini-mitral in case of uh, trivial or uh, moderate uh, regurgitation. Now the problem of calcification of the ascending aorta, 50% um, find this is not a contraindication, and 70% uh, are the opinion uh, that the um, mini-mitral can be performed on the fibrillating heart. I have not had a very good experience with fibrillating heart. Perhaps it was a problem of the instrumentation, but when you lift the aortic root, sometimes with the retractor, you may uh, just uh, change a little bit the geometry of the uh, aortic root. And uh, in my personal experience, I had quite a lot of aortic regurgitation, but perhaps it was due to the fact that I was not using the proper retractor. Anyway, now the next question uh, to the panels was um, if severe peripheral artery disease might be a contraindication to minimitral. Only 15% know. Why? Because there are alternative cannulation. We have seen in the previous talk we can cannulate on uh, the uh, upper extremities if it is necessary. Uh, and uh, finally, the, the next question, the complexity of the mitral valve uh, um, pathology. Is this a contraindication? 70% found no. However, 10 to 15 percent uh, were the opinion that if there are many problems uh, in the uh, mitral valve, like bileaflet or bileaflet and calcification, huge calcification, this could be considered as um, a relative contraindication. So finally, um, additional tricuspid or maze procedure, large majority do not consider this to be a contraindication. I can also be the same opinion because this is a, a good approach for uh, both uh, AV valve. So when we look at the end, what is remaining as a contraindication, as potential contraindication? Next one, please. Um, Expected severe adhesion when the patient had previous lung surgery on the right side, uh, planned extensive decalcification of the annulus, at least in my institution, I would uh, be uh, happy to have the full control about the uh, AV uh, groove if there is any problem. Aortic valve regurgitation 2 plus, I personally, uh, I'm not in favor to uh, practicing mitral valve, uh, mini mitral with the uh, aorta still open. I have had one uh, very disastrous experience in a patient with an abdominal aortic aneurysm uh, with perfusion from the, the leg and uh, severe embolization. Uh, we did not realize at that time that the thrombus material was such important. Uh, I would consider it since then uh, at least as relative contraindication and cannulate probably the patient on the axillary artery to have anti-grade flow in the abdominal aorta. And uh, in patients with functional MR with very low e ejection fraction where you do not know exactly if the procedure might end with a VAD uh, procedure, I would be careful um, with a mini mitral. So the future mini mitral, and this is uh, the topic where I'm entering a little bit within because we are in favor of minimizing the cardiopulmonary support. When we speak about mini mitral, we are really focusing on the approach and the imaging during the operation. I would be happy to look also at uh, improving and um, miniaturizing the cardiopulmonary bypass um, equipment because usually we have longer time uh, of perfusion in this patient, at least at the beginning of the experience, to reduce the volume overload with uh, a very single shot cardio uh, cardioplegy with low volume 
and I will just show you one of the potential improvements. We have seen before these um, several loops, which can be attached, of course, with very good results to, um, uh, to uh, repair the posterior and the anterior leaflet and to preserve the material instead of resecting it. We have worked quite hard in the last year with an automatic uh, delivery system for um, cords, for cords with an anchor to be placed in the papillary muscle. And uh, we are able now with the advent of microtechnology to shoot these uh, Gore-Tex uh, in a very, very uh, simple and quick way. It takes about uh, five seconds to attach both parts on the papillary muscle and on the uh, leaflet. This is probably an intermediate way to the uh, total uh, endovascular technique done once perhaps by a cardiologist. This is also minimizing the, uh, the technology. And the final, uh, my final is uh, just a citation of uh, Tomislav Mihailovich. Of course, uh, the, the future will be the, to determine the best procedure for the individual patient. Uh, rather than considering alone the, the length of the skin incision. Thank you very much.